Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall for what is episode 8 of the Scratch Build series. Having uh, spent two the previous two episodes uh, working on the shop fronts I'm turning our attentions now to something that's a little bit more straightforward. Uh, there was quite a bit of fiddly work with regards to that so that in tonight's episode we're sort of going back to uh, basics. What we're going to look at is fitting the roof to the little extension and the roof to the main bulk of the building. So uh, let's not hang about and we'll start on the extension. Now with the extension what I want to try and do is have a sheet of card put in to this void here in which then we can lay our plastic card tiles on top. So with that in mind if you take an old scrap piece of card that hopefully you are keeping in a scraps box and just put it up against it and then let's see if I can do this that you can all see if we take our pencil and run it along one wall two walls and round that funny curve We are left with an outline of what the uh, the card needs to be and if we just take our craft knife and we'll cut that out and in true blue peter style i've already done it because i wanted to make sure it would work you know and we're left with this and what we can do with that is just uh, we'll need to try and work from underneath as well to help support it we can just set that into that void. Now what we're trying to do here is to make sure that it's at least flush with both sides. I'm not too concerned about it being flush here. If anything you want to have it, let me see if I can turn that sideways. You want to have it raised up just ever so slightly at the front there because if we don't, if it runs in right to the back of this strip of card, well, we're left with sort of, you know, an, a, a flat edge in before we start our slope. So we want to try and avoid that if we can. And it means then laying the, pla or the, the tiles across the top of that will sit much better. Oops. So once you're happy with that, in that position, then what we can do is flood in behind it with some rocket card glue and hopefully the capillary action will uh, grip that and we'll also add a couple of wee off cuts so let's turn it upside down and get my glue here now again don't concern yourself about the gaps that may be left whenever you're cutting this particularly on the corner and possibly at the back too because once we start laying the tiles on top all that's going to get covered over anyway this is purely just to give us something to apply those um, tiles to uh, in order that they don't bow down in underneath so let's turn it over and I'm just going to run some rocket glue in along whoops that's way too much and down the sides And along the back you're not really getting to see an awful lot of this I'm sure because the angles are quite tight in terms of what the area I'm working with but before that would go off we'll try we'll just double check our alignments on the front <coughs> Do 
here oh dear, I've ran a whole load of right down the sides. What we'll do is we'll make use of that glue, little off cuts of card, anything that's up to hand. That one's too long. Doesn't even have to be you know a perfectly straight one, just slip it in there and that'll just sort of give a little bit of support to the roof from beneath. Run a wee bit of glue onto that. And do another one there. And then I'll do one along the back too. Okay, I think I'm happy enough with that. And those wee strips of card inside it will just give added support that should, once that dry, you were to put a little bit too much pressure onto the front of this, at least th there's support now, you know, to, to stop it from giving way on you altogether and falling inside the structure and having to redo it. So that is the first stage of the extension. We'll leave that to dry and we'll move on to the main building. Now we're going to build this in two sides or in two halves. What you need to do is measure the length of your building from edge to edge. Actually let's do the back. I've done the front one so I will concentrate on the back one. And I've done the front one again just to have a wee test run at it but also just to save a little bit of time later on. So in true old building style. This building does not run true. At the bottom it's uh, 121 millimetres and at the top it is 120 millimetres. So we will cut out, take a piece of card again and we'll cut out, well there you are, that one's just bang on. Let's just see if that one covers it okay. Okay, so we have that and that's 120. Now, to get the height of the roof, if you lay your ruler along the edge of your centre support to the edge of the wall, that there is, in my case, 40 millimetres. And we will mark that. onto the card okay just double check those measurements yep Yep, so 40 millimetres and then we're going to cut that. Now don't cut this straight and I'll explain why in a minute. Lay your ruler along the, the line that you've just marked and then with your blade you want to sort of angle it at around about the 45 away from the ruler and cut it like that. And it gives you sort of more or less a 45 millimeter bevel along the edge of that. And what that means is whenever we put it up onto the building It's actually sitting more or less uh, vertical against the wall and that will allow us whenever it comes to fitting the uh, drain, uh, the guttering, uh, we have a, a nice flat surface to attach that to. So the next thing is we need to work in around the chimneys. 
Now the chimneys are six, six millimeters wide. So we can first put that mark onto our card. And then if we take the measurement from the bottom of the chimney here to the corner of the building and in this case it is thirty two millimeters. Uh, So that leaves um, eight millimeters to the top that we need to cut out that the chimney takes up. So eight and eight. And then we can just cut these out. And this should, it should fit, and it does. So with that in place, we are left with just the slightest of overhangs on the bottom of the roof. And then if I bring in the other one that I've already done, which goes on the front we essentially have a roof now both of them there may well be a little bit of a conflict just in the, uh, the card let me see if I can just get this sitting right No, that's okay. All right. Oh, one other thing actually I should have mentioned. If you do find that you have an overhang on either edge, what I'm doing is cutting it right back that it meets and it's flush with the wall. As per the prototype, there's very little of an extension out the side of the wall like you would have in more modern buildings. It's more flush with the wall and what we will then do is run a little bit of um, barge board up the side of this whenever the tiling has all been finished to tidy this all off and I'll also hide the join between roof and the building itself. But I am more or less happy with that. So the next stage is gluing it together. Let me get a few pieces, uh, bits and pieces gathered together and we'll look at doing that. Okay, so whenever you are happy with the fit of your roof, now I want to make this roof removable. Uh, so for that purpose, I'm going to have to glue supports in underneath, but to make it easier to work with, I'm going to use Tamiya masking tape and we're going to tape down the house. Oh, I hope it sticks to that sandpaper now. 
We may need a number of strips of it. We're going to hold the roof together too because we want it to ensure it stays stuck. And I need a couple more pieces. I'm just going to use a bit of normal masking tape to try and keep those two down there. I don't want it to, the, the normal masking tape on the actual card because you find it being a little bit more tacky sometimes can lift the actual card. But that is more or less the structure being held down in place. Now, do you remember way back in episode one, we did the uh, we had the templates made out for the building. Take one of those templates again, and again with an off cut of card. We want the end piece, and we don't need the full width of the building because we're just going up into the roof of this. But we, it's there to give us the angle that we need for the pitch of the roof. And if you mark that off, did I do that right at the top? I did. got a pitch of a roof and we don't need the whole length because we don't want it to sort of uh, appear into the the inside of the building that you could see it through the windows so we'll just trim it off and I had already cut a couple out in preparation so I'm going to make them make it the same width as that too Okay, and I've got three of them now in total. And what we can use with those, if we turn the building upside down and into the inside, sorry, needed to get a uh, pair of tweezers. We can take that and we can put it down onto the roof uh, inside and that in itself will give the support that we need for the roof to stay in place. So first of all it will run a bead of glue along the join line just to join the two roofs together or the two halves of the roof together and I'm being very careful not to do it right to the very edges because I don't want it to glue to the walls in order that we can lift this off and then if we Run a bit of glue along our card. And we're going to put two into the larger side and one into the other side. They don't need to be perfect. Goodness me, that glued already. Whenever you work this rocket glue right, it works really well. And I had a comment on uh, one of the previous videos with regards to the rocket glue uh, from Stephen Humphreys uh, from Elven Home. And he's absolutely right. If you get that onto your fingers, well, you end up finding your fingers going together too. It really, 
it really is some stuff for that. Right, so that's them all in place and they're already going off but what we will do is we'll let those dry thoroughly and then we can look at adding the tiles to the roof but that's the first stage okay Okay, the, the roof is now dry and we now reach the uh, warts and all stage of this section of the scratch build. I do like to try and sort of keep you informed of any little errors or mistakes in that that I do, do um, go through. I've already said that I wanted to make this uh, roof a lift off. Whenever I was doing the initial um, test fit of this, I thought just with a little bit of play on the um, the chimney I could get the clearance which I can there but I can't at the front or the back it's basically lodged in so I have two options for left I can trim a little bit more off here but it's going to leave the roof gappy whenever um, it's finished and I don't like the idea of that so I think what we're going to have to do is glue the whole thing down um, rather than make it a lift off version of a roof and any access that I want to make to the building will have to be done from beneath but I still need to put a floor in and I haven't done that and I can't get this off now either so this is a bit of a dilemma I can actually maybe get it off I just need there it's off on one side I'm going to have a wee think about this and I'll come back to you whenever I've decided what may well happen is we'll glue that on but I may well stick the f floors in no I can't do that because I need to put the window panes in as well <coughs> The joys of scratch building, a little, another problem that requires solving. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Right, I've given it a little bit of thought and I'm going to leave the roof as a removable um, piece at the minute. It's not the easiest thing to get off, but I can take it off and on again. And I think just from a, the point of view of... Um, actually coming to paint and weather this thing it would make sense to be able to remove it so we're not having to mask up a whole lot of the building at a later date if I do want to glue it down it's not an issue um, and we can add a little bit of flashing in around the chimneys to hide any gaps that are going to be there because of slightly wider space we need to be able to lift this off but anyway the um, the roof is now ready to have the tiles added to it oh actually just before I go into that you'll see in underneath that I've added some uh, what vertical horizontal I don't know um, support running across the roof and that was really just added in as a an, an afterthought it was just to sort of give a little bit more structure as you know if you were to press down on it but also stops the the roof sort of from you know bowing out on you a little bit too so um we off cuts of card will soon suffice for doing that just make sure obviously with your um internal walls that uh, it doesn't come up too close to them particularly if you are planning to um, want to lift the roof on and off so what are we going to do for the roof right some time ago whenever I was writing up the shopping list I did add in the Slater's plastic card roof sheet which is this um, sheet here as you can see there is a line of tiles 
all the way along it and then there is a blank band and the idea of these is that you will cut one row of tiles and a blank band off in one piece as this is here and we will lay that onto the roof and then the next one will overlap that blank band so you have the regular run of the tiles going all the way up and I've already started that on the other side and I'll show you that in a minute but before we do that we want to run a little edge of plain plastic along the front of this and that's just so that whenever we're laying whenever you're laying the plastic over the top of each other there's there's obviously going to be a little raised up bit and if we don't lay a piece of plastic along the bottom this bottom row of tiles will actually sit at a slightly steeper angle than the rest now it's not a big deal it is noticeable but it's not a big deal and actually I have done it on one or two of my other scratch builds that I haven't put that wee strip in but for the case of this we will do it so with an off cut of plastic card it only needs to be sort of three four mil in depth let's move this out of the way and with that piece of plastic card we'll run it along the edge and we're using the rocket glue again for this process it does seem to be the best stuff as I keep saying uh, certainly for applying the plastic to the card now if you don't have rocket glue or you don't want to use rocket glue you can there is another trick that you can use if you apply a coat of PVA adhesive right the way across your card base one it seals the card in and uh, also whenever it dries it gives a sort of plastic coating and you can use your Revel contact type adhesive to glue your plastic onto that and that's worked quite well for me in the past okay so that's on there and you'll notice it's sticking over at one end don't worry about that what we will try and do is marry up one side of it absolutely perfectly flush with the side of the roof and then on the other side once everything has been given a good sort of 24 hours to dry we will trim the other side off that it is also flush and it's another reason why <coughs> excuse me it's another reason why being able to have the roof as a removable item would be a useful thing at this stage so now that is on it's time oh it's time to put on a strip of the tiles now in the case of the tiles we will work from this side going left and this tile is going to be a full piece and I'll say more on that in a little minute and then we'll trim off at the other side and again we're just going to let that overlap and trim it off afterwards and we'll just double check that I've cut the right one <laughs> which I haven't so I'll have to do another one oh dear that one there okay and again we'll run the rocket glue along now I'm going to run the rocket glue along the back edge of it the bit that attaches it to the the cardboard and perhaps it's overkill I'm not sure but I'm using the contact to glue on the plastic just because I know that that plastic weld it's a really good bond and it's never ever going to come off now with this piece here is that the right one I lifted? it is with this piece here we're not going to do it flush at the front what we want to do is have it extend out over the front of the building just a fraction a millimeter or so nothing more than that 
and that just means that whenever it comes to fitting the the guttering along the um, beneath the tiles afterwards it will uh, it will just sort of sit over the top of that and I'm also just using the ruler on the left hand side to make sure that the piece of plastic is flush on that side there and if I tip it over hopefully you can see it's not the easiest thing to see because it's similar colour to the rest of it you can just about see hopefully that it sits slightly beyond the edge of the roof there and with that on we can apply the next layer above that now I'm not going to show you how to do that now because in all honesty it's just a repeat process what we'll do is I'll swing it around the back and show you what I've done there okay so that is one two three four strips of the plastic that are already in place and you can see it's already making a nice effect now on the edge here you will see that there is a little gap but whenever we add our um, fascia that will end up get disguised or alternatively what we could do is add a little bit of filler in just to fill those gaps and place the fascia beneath but we'll come to that in a later video you'll also notice as well on a couple of the tiles I've taken a little neck out of it and it's literally just if I take a, an off cut a little trim along the edge and a wee diagonal cut just like that there lay it on and it just gives that additional impression that this is a little bit past its best days in terms of its upkeep and maintenance and we'll just once it's painted we'll add a nice extra touch to the uh, to the overall build what you could even do as well is cut out an entire square and drop it down a little bit that it's leaning over and I'll maybe do that on the other side just to demonstrate that um, as I go on but rather than watching me repeat this process the whole way through I'll carry on with this and we're working right the way up once you get round the chimney breast you're going to have to just measure a little bit more carefully to ensure that you get it all in also just make sure that your tiles overlap by a half mark on each run so this was a full tile at the bottom as I explained on the other side the next one's a half tile and then a full and then a half and it just keeps that um, uh, uneven run right the way up as it would be now on the side one we'll do exactly the same thing and one run it right up to the very edge there work it on the right hand side that everything is flush and then on the left hand side we'll let it hang loose and then afterwards we can flip it over and trim around the edges to get that nice curved shape to that side of the building so I will carry on with this it's a fair bit of work in it um, and I'll come back to you whenever that's completed okay so that's the majority of the roof now complete um, it's taken me a night and a half to work at this on and off um, but we're almost there as you can see I have the side one done and it's already been trimmed a little bit difficult to work at but just persevere with it if you are wor working at this project um, it does come good in the end um, it's maybe a little bit untidy round the edges there but I think once painted um, it'll come good you'll also see that I did a little bit of ex an experiment with the tile slipping out of place not a hundred percent sure whether I like it or not but it's at the back of the building we won't be able to see it very well um, so it was worth experimenting with but what I do like are the little um, sort of chipped tiles sort of randomly placed across the, the roof and that's the same in the front and they'll show up really well whenever um, uh, it's painted. Um, one note I will make is whenever I demonstrated this front strip here I carried on with the back and the sides before I came back to this and this had actually glued hard and I had glued without um, 
bonding to the the card surface behind so you can probably just tell maybe not from that angle there it does drop down a little bit steeper than the rest of them you can sort of see the funny little line running there it'll hide to a degree with them um, uh, with painting but it's just something to be be aware of and um, sort of probably run through the entire section of your wall or sorry your roof uh, before finish you know to and finish the whole thing before walking away from the project now there's only a couple more things that I need to do one is to cap the roof now there's a couple of way to do, ways to do this and for this one here we're going to use a very thin strip of the tiles uh, what is that let me see It's coming in at about two millimetres. Now it does sort of make the top a little bit flatter. Um, but I think just in this case it's maybe the most straightforward. And I think it just does the job. So we'll run a wee drop of contact across that. pop that into place and I need to make sure I'm doing it the right way around so that we still have the criss crossing between the, the tiles or the staggered between the tiles Right, that's just enough on that. Now, the other thing I have been looking at uh, to conclude this episode is the barge boards along the side. If we take, this is a three mil strip. It's actually an off cut of the, um, uh, can I get that into focus? An off cut of the, the roofing. And what we want to do is run it along that. We'll make a vertical line here at the chimney. Another one here at the end of the top coin. And we'll make a cut. Can't see that one other one now. Just like that there. <coughs> and we'll add that on there like that. Okay, can you see? And why, uh, what we'll, we'll do is one that will hide a few of the little gaps in the tiles and also if we put that into place now um, it means when we can prime this entire structure and then this wee strip of paint or this wee strip here is ready for painting as well I will glue that on off camera I just wanted to demonstrate what we're going to do there um, one other thing is that the roof does actually come off and it comes off not too badly um, I need a little bit it's not the sort of thing I'd want to do too often but by taking the roof off I'm now going to be able to paint it up uh, or sprit, prime it ready for painting um, rather than having a mask off so it is something to just consider whenever you're building your own you'll see also that I have trimmed the edge as of most of them these ones here have just been done tonight so they're perhaps not quite ready but you're literally going to if you can take the roof off is to press down on it and run your craft knife across the um, strips until they start coming away now because they are overlapping it will take a number of passes I'm actually doing this fairly lightly 
and um, because they're still gluing I don't really want to be shifting by the you know the pressure and shifting the tiles but that's it job done right let's leave that there for this week and um, that is going to more or less conclude the the main aspect of this build there are further details that need to to go in now um, such as uh, guttering downspouts window frames uh, glazing and sort of blocking the internal as um, uh, you know, sort of building walls on the internal aspects of the the build so that you don't see through from front to back. But that more or less completes the main structure. So over the next probably two episodes, I will do sort of fly through different aspects of the little details and we'll also look at some painting. Uh, but in the meantime, once again, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked it, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so um, and also if you've been building this project along with me don't forget to share your progress either on my Facebook page or on the Model Rail Network Facebook page both of which you will find the links for in the description. Also in the description is a shopping list of all parts that will be required to build the uh, the house uh, some of those are through um, Justin at scale model scenery and if you click on that link it will take you directly to them I have an affiliate set up uh, via scale model scenery and if you do purchase through that link it will um, sort of bring a little reward back to me as well so please consider that too but anyway in the meantime thank you very much again for watching uh, it's another long one so um yeah apologies it's it's hard to condense these down but uh i'll chat soon bye